<laughs> Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Check it. Okay. Excellent. Number four here. So. I guess we can Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, just a little bit. Can I still see? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. So. If necessary, pull back yeah, them. Yeah, I can lean over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So yeah, I think my character has something to present right now. Yeah. Uh, PJ says this game is not broken enough. <laughs> we got a. You're wrong. <laughs> got a Spectrum Mana Book here and a CD. These are ten bucks for the both of them, and they're pretty awesome. They got excellent artwork. And they're signed by the team that um, made them. We also have uh, three more CDs of the same thing. They're five bucks each. And this, uh, this little bitty perler I made. Uh, Flammy, I don't know if you guys. This is uh, $20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, this, so, <laughs> little small perler I do in my free time. The entire mana fortress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a Prince. That is. Yep. That's where we're gonna broadcast from next year. You have a set of what? Set. Yes. Are you gonna be able to swap controllers? With oh yeah, of the yeah, the main character okay. perlers. The uh, we got perlers of those for five bucks. So, what is the file name for the boy? Uh, the and boy's name that won is MV. Got it. Excellent. Shout out to the French people. Yeah, they've uh, done quite a bit for the <coughs> names. Yes. But I wouldn't yes. fit. Yeah. I probably would. Mm -hmm. It would fit. Mm -hmm. It would fit, but I would want it. <laughs> we can do, does this have spaces? We can do Mr. No. Mr. Oh, too. No spaces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. hopefully we don't need much luck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there is Buffy. And, uh, and Vampire. And Vampire. And everything else. <laughs> and Softbox. Don't forget the yeah. Softbox. We actually yeah. Softbox earlier in practice, so. Ooh. Yeah, well, I didn't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Really good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's just soft black, and we don't know if it's coming. Oh, he does. I do. Singer knows. He's like, yeah, that just happened. All right, I'll count down. Three, two, one, go. Okay, everyone. This is Secret of Mana Speedrun. I am <coughs> Jagger Moff, and my buddy here is Dinger PA, mm -hmm. who is basically doing all the work until I can join him. Secret of Mana is a co-op speedrun. Originally we planned on having three player co-op, but unfortunately one of our runners couldn't make it Luigi Meister. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate, but we will still be using three controllers, just in a bit of a different fashion that you might expect. In any case, um, the entire speedrun can probably be summarized with uh, being about precision and decision making. It isn't particularly fast-paced, but you have to be really quick in making your decisions and reacting to randomness, as in RNG. Uh, RNG in this game is a very large factor. Almost everything can go wrong in one way or another, and we always have to be prepared for that. Especially in the early game, there is a, are a lot of potential uh, things that can go wrong and we can easily die. Once we get more characters, it's much easier to recover from certain incidents and it shouldn't be a problem at all after that. But especially in a certain spot, which I will point out, um, we can easily die, but 
I'm pretty confident it's going to work out. Oh, I hope so. Yes, indeed. So, about base mechanics for the game. When you run, you are committed to that direction to running. As in, you have to stop running and refill your stamina meter until you can run again. The same goes for uh, slashing with a sword. You deplete your stamina bar entirely, and unless you wait for the full bar to fill up, you will do only a fraction of the damage. Also, something to point out about this cutscene, it auto-scrolls itself, so I don't have to press anything. I like that. Yeah. More customs. There need to be more RPGs with like auto-scrolling text. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's a bit slow, but whatever. In any case, um, if the text for some reason seems to scroll very slowly and we are not pressing buttons, it's usually because it's an auto-scrolling cutscene. Sometimes we mess up and don't press buttons, but that's pretty rare. You know, sometimes the game will mess with you because sometimes different controllers can have the text and yeah. we don't know why. It's very weird on how that works. But we are sure thank God for The sequel has that issue too with the controllers having mysterious control over the text. Okay. So, okay, initially here, uh, Stinger is going to kill a few enemies which are called rabbites here on his way. And <laughs> there are a few mechanics to those. Um, basically, he is not trying to level up the character, he is trying to level up the weapon. For leveling up the weapon, he needs to kill 11 enemies, so his weapon will level up. And that's basically the essential part which we will have to do before uh, the mana fortress. Also, as you can see, usually he does 18 damage if his dominant bar is full, and sometimes he does only 14. The 14 damage is called low damage roll, and it occurs randomly at about 20-30% of the time. And that's one of the many random factors I pointed out earlier. I got a lot of rabbits that time, a lot more than usual. Yeah. As I said, we have to adjust on the fly and basically count how many enemies we kill and try to disarm certain enemies later on if that works out. So, and especially early on, there are quite a few cutscenes, so I have plenty of time to explain for, for donation reading. <laughs> um, but I think the first boss battle is pretty interesting to display because it's basically the only boss battle which we have full control over, almost full control over. Yeah, there's very little that can go wrong in this battle. Yes, indeed. The maximum that can go wrong in the first battle is he gets four ro low damage rolls total, which are four 14 damages, which means he has to do one more hit. That's very uh, tame compared to what can happen with other bosses if you get bad luck. Well, that's one. So he simply stands next to the mantis ant and waits until he slashes and walks away. It's very simple manipulation. I love that too. Yeah. Three. Three. Okay, no okay. 14. That's nice. So that's basically as good as I can go. Indeed. You can get crits in this game, but it's a very, very low chance. Yeah. About one percent on that boss. One or two percent. And you just don't count on that ever. Yeah. Exactly. Whenever there's uh, on the top Britain uh, something just got whacked, that means that was a critical hit, which usually does double damage. But it's so rare, we basically don't count on that ever occurring. Also, later on, it's really not essential anymore to get critical hits. And there is also no way to manipulate them. It's purely random. Yeah, the only time critical hits actually matter basically when within the first 18 minutes and then a couple points from then on, but it's not many. Yeah. On a side note, uh, during practice we considered for a minute, or actually tried about, uh, using two player one controller for the start. <laughs> and it worked out surprisingly well, but I felt like uh, it would be a bit weird since there is so much to explain in this game, and I couldn't keep up with it while uh, holding 
uh, the buttons or the controller. Yeah, we were able to do it, but it took a lot of focus, and we wouldn't have been able to get as good a commentary yeah. while doing it. Okay, and one more thing to point out about movement, I guess, is diagonals are pretty much always faster. Also, there is a lot of sub subtleties which we do to manipulate enemy spawns. Right here, Stinger will try to dispawn no. this flower, but it's a large portion of randomness, whether it happens, actually happens or not. And it's also random if that flower spawns. Yes, indeed. There is basically uh, certain things we can do on every screen to increase our chances of it going really well, but overall, there's always the chance that it can go horribly wrong. In some places, that's worse than in others. For example, this flower here spawning, it's an inconvenience, nothing more. As in, basically there will never be a run which has absolutely good luck everywhere. There's too much randomness to it. And so here, another cutscene with a lot of text, which we basically speed through. I feel like we have... This is definitely a good time for donation comments. Yeah. All right, uh, before I start that, I would like to take a minute to plug our French and German restreams. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Mr. MV is doing the French restream. He's been doing that for a while. It's uh, one of the things doing over there. And uh, Twitch.tv slash exe underscore de is doing the German restream. Uh, and <laughs> MV was actually the name for the boy in this game as well. Yes. He's restreaming and he's trying to save Vanna at the same time. Excellent. So, yeah. Um, also, I can point out that uh, French guys and I think almost the German guys put quite a bit of research into the runs, so they were, are actually prepared for commentarying on them. So, a huge shout out to them and thank you for doing this. Uh, Chrono Trigger 100%. So yeah, really quick, um, we will get the option to save here, and we, we will do so. And also we are going to reset back to the title screen by holding start select L and R for a second. Well, less than a second, but whatever. And basically, this saves us two text boxes and having to walk all the way outside. So that's a little time saver. We will see the title screen a few times during the round for various reasons. Also, since the uh, sword already leveled up, Stinger will now uh, get the spear to level one, which is the preparation for basically the next portion. Well, the rest of the game. The rest of the game, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He spawned that flower. Bad luck with that mushroom, but it doesn't matter too much. Oh yeah. Also, who thought cannon traveling was a valid method of getting around? Uh, apparently the game designers. Very safe. Right now, are you still Go for it. Go for it. Um, so I just want to say that uh, Simon Vickland, the composer for Bionic Commander Rearmed, um, his um, bid war for what NES game for a marathon he's going to remix is about to end. I'm giving a 30 minute extension up until 12.30, so you have about 40 minutes to donate. Um, when uh, the bidding war is closed, he's actually going to stream on his channel, uh, twitch.tv slash Simon Vicklin, um, while he's composing. And he also recruited uh, Brando from Dwayne and Brando to uh, help with the lyrics of the remix. So real quick here, um, real quick here, um, this area is actually extremely dangerous, a slight misstep can lead to our death, and so basically, the RNG is not with us. Yeah, this was, this is random. No Mickey Mouse this time though. <laughs> well, 
or the cat or whatever the special balloon is. In any case, at least it's not at the beginning of the cave. If it happens to balloon you right at the start of the cave, there's a good chance that you will outright die. As I said, the most volatile part of the run is this early cave because you have no second character to back up on. That's about it. So here we got the magic rope, which will be used in a few different fashions. <laughs> some intended, uh, some not. I don't like that orange. Yeah. <laughs> That's better. Excellent. So yeah, getting hit by those slimes is pretty dangerous because they split into multiple ones, and since they can stun lock you if they hit you, as in they hit you, and while you're on the floor, can do nothing. They can hit you again and again, and you can do nothing about. It. So it's better to be safe about them. Also, I would like to point out, running properly, as in moving through the level properly, is actually pretty tricky. I feel like Stinger is making this look way easier than it actually is, since I think you have made no mistakes so far. So, uh, not many. Yeah. So the spear is now leveled up, and that's perfect before the <laughs> walking cave. And now, here is the first major glitch of the run. Right at the... Well, shopping. Now, here's what he is doing. He buys a candy, he buys a medical herb, and closes the window. Then he goes into the inventory, sets the cursor on the medical herb, goes back into the selling mini, sells the medical herb, sells the candy, goes out of the selling menu, and goes back into the selling menu. And now, he sells. <laughs> I like money. Flats for a ton of money. <laughs> so, essentially what happens is we manipulate the game into selecting an empty... Yeah, well, let, let him see what you're selling to... Yeah, yeah a flat, flat item. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the enemy, the, those uh, The flying flats. <laughs> yeah. um, essentially what we are doing is tricking the game into selling literally nothing which turns into blats, eventually it will be nothing again. So that's pretty handy. Also, if you would like to know exactly how those things work, we have a knowledge base site on the SDA wiki, since there is very little time to explain everything in depth. So also, here is, he is going to buy two more chain vests here, instead of only one which we actually need. This also has a very specific reason, which is the second glitch of the game. So, while trashing a certain item, the developers made a small mistake in their programming. Basically, what he is doing is trashing items which he is currently wearing. The game makes then a mistake by, uh, while unequipping the uh, items he trashed, and now he has zero of those <laughs> respective <laughs> items in his inventory. But in Secret of Mana, zero actually means eight. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Zero means eight times use. But if we would uh, pick up a chest with a medical herb, it would swing over back to one, which would be pretty bad. So we don't want that to happen. So usually the, you are limited to a supply amount of four, but getting this to eight is really handy. Also, we are going to get some additional items. Usually those items in our runs are actually enough for the entirety of the run, and we don't need any more. Well, unless it goes horribly wrong. Whereas yeah. the boys like, 50,000, what? Here you go, I've got it. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too stingy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to be able to buy the sprite there, but the game doesn't let you. Yeah. Which is pretty interesting. I mean, I would love to have an option to simply spend that much money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would have tried it out. I didn't know how to glitch. So, he's almost done with the uh, cutscenes and inventory stuff here in the town, and the next boss is about to come up. I forgot to switch to the sword here. I'll do that before the fight. Mm. 
So yeah, remembering everything you have to do in order and with menu optimization is actually pretty tricky since you have to be constantly moving. And I'm especially, let's say, uh, bad at menus. Lower out of use. <laughs> well, as in, you have to switch rings, ring menu, and it's pretty difficult if you never practice it. So whatever. Okay, here's the first uh, boss. Uh, Stinger is going to use a very specific method to try and manipulate the spawns of the Tropicolo. I'm not sure if you messed it up already. I don't think I did. Oh, it I worked. Worked the right time. Okay, if he hits him at the first possible moment, as soon as Tropicolo comes out every single time, the Tropicolo will actually stay above ground. Usually when you hit him, he will immediately dive down again. This is the manipulation to get two full damage swings in every single time. If we are lucky, we get uh, crit or always full damage rolls on it, which would mean we uh, would get a four cycle on him, which is actually pure luck, but it happens sometimes. I think that was the fourth one. Yeah, you should die on this hit. Um, yes, yeah. down. Excellent. <laughs> so, and right after this, it should be about 17, 18 minutes. Yeah, probably about 18 minutes right now. And now, Dagger finally gets to do something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. With slacking, I guess. Well, almost. Yeah, now he gets to pull his own weight. So, what's the sprite's name? Uh, Batman? <laughs> Batman? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Batman? Okay. Nice. Thank you very much. I'm Blackman. <laughs> yeah, Blackman wouldn't actually fit. Silly six character. Wow. Yeah, I knew it was something else. That was rare. Okay. Yes, okay. Also, by the way, by having six character names, we actually lose about 20 seconds during the entirety of the run, since <laughs> every single character in a name will cost about one frame. Mm -hmm. That's if all the characters have uh, six character names. Yeah, this is separate from actually having to input those names. <laughs> Rare to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are ready to go. Also, I have currently activated the, sec uh, the third controller because I'm going to set it up a bit different than what you probably used to. <laughs> so, the story of this is we are uh, both one player, two controller runners, which means we both use two controllers during our actual runs. The reason for this is, yo, let me put it like this. You will see why we use two, at least two <laughs> controllers. So much for this. A uh, lot of glitches are actually only possible with at least two controllers. Yeah, so. Using two controllers takes about an hour off the speed run. Yeah, approximately. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to set up my character right now. Equipping, equipping. <coughs> um, upside down, there we go. He now has an upside down controller. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So, yeah, that's my technique. I'm just for disappointed you don't have them taped together like <laughs> on your stream. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, the thing about this is, taped together, I'm not practiced enough for it. Sorry about that. Just mess that up. Yeah, the AI okay. in this game for movement is really not that smart, so that's another really nice thing about having two human players playing this game, too. Is not having to constantly worry about your ally getting stuck behind corners and stuff. Yeah, yeah we'll demonstrate later exactly how bad the AI is. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I saw them practicing for that and it did not disappoint. Yes, indeed. It is pretty special, <laughs> to say the least. So, one thing to point out, I tried to unselect my character, but for some reason the sprite is really bad at unselecting the character. Uh, what we tried to do there is actually dash. Uh, around the corner and basically the AI characters do not use up stamina to run so when I unselect a character the AI will run behind Wait, his character okay. Okay. Um, basically 
the AI character will run without using stamina, and he could switch to the other the AI character and keep running basically right after switching to the character. But this time around, it uh, well, it didn't let me unselect for some reason. I really don't know why that happens sometimes, but I guess it happens. Also, barrels are really overpowered in this game. <laughs> Just saying. On, and on another note, even though the hairband is the weakest head item for the girl, it is still much, much better than nothing. <laughs> so, and here are the two werewolves. Uh, they are really nasty uh, sometimes. And they are a pretty large factor of our uh, randomness. So I got that right. Okay, if we simply stun lock them, the only thing they can do is exactly healing and whether they heal or not this is absolutely random so we got one and one more thing we are now trying to level up the you need to hit um, we are trying to level up the uh, sword right now to level up to level two for a special reason you will soon see that um, <laughs> In any case, uh, uh, what's the girl's name? It is uh, Rayan. R A Y A N. Okay, Rayan. Right, yes. Okay. So yeah, leveling up the sword now is a bit different than before. We don't simply have to kill enemies, but we also have to kill, let them kill by the boy. As in, he has to do the last hit so he gets the full weapon experience. <coughs> oh, right. Oops. Yeah, I'm not good at menus. He's good at the rest of them, just not the menus. So yeah, for the most part, uh, Mr. Stinger will use the menus. Well, when I can. Indeed. So, as I said, sometimes it's simply better for the boy to keep hitting the enemies. And I do nothing, since a lot of enemies have recovery animations, which we cannot uh, interrupt. And so it's better for the boy to do the maximum amount of damage since he deals the most damage overall. So. Also, only the axe and the sword can whack away bushes. What is down screen? Yes, okay. So, what we just did there is wait a tiny little bit for the eye on the left to spawn an enemy since there can only be three enemies on the screen at any given point. Since there can only be three enemies on the screen at any given point, uh, we basically despawn a flat that was a little bit further on the right. And so once again, there's no reason for me to hit this enemy right here since it will only lower the damage output. Oops. So that's okay. Well, that's, gotten, that was the AI. I've gotten <laughs> yeah, sure, sometimes the AI, AI. Sometimes the AI gets in the way, and he will kill us. Nice, thank you. So yeah, there are. By the way, there are a lot of techniques which we can apply to speed up the run with having actually two players, such as taking different paths. I got him. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, those two goals, okay. we don't want to get stuck there because mm -hmm. they can stun lock and outright kill you. That was kind of scary. Yeah, actually, that was. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, too yeah. Yeah. I will heal the girl right now. Okay. Before we go out. Actually, before we hit the switch. Switch. Oh, you do it. Oh, you heal actually. You have the items. Oh. Oh, there's the switch. We run up. Okay. There are a lot of things like these where we can simply abuse the fact that we have two players and go around one way. I unselect here. And 
Also, since we are very much used to moving that, since we are very much used to one player, two controller strategies, we also often will simply unselect one controller and not do anything. So, for example, right around here. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Yeah, no, I get to have fun yeah. with two controllers. Yeah. You have to select it. This is probably the, the toughest boss in the whole game, normally. Just because you don't have good casual play, just because you don't have any magic yet. You yeah. can't present issues in speedruns, but that's only if he really wants to troll us. Yeah, well, it's mostly time loss, if I anything at all. Oh, it's on the sprite. I'll wait for you to switch. Okay. So, yeah. He didn't get unconscious, which is nice. And he decides to jump away immediately, yeah. which is annoying. Uh, yes, it is. So I guess we have time to explain here. What we are doing is we are swapping out level one with the level two <laughs> weapon. Nah, oh. that didn't work. Whatever, hold that here. Yeah, that works. There we go. <laughs> nice. You can have your controller back. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah. What we... How this happens is actually pretty weird. Um, basically, we charge up a level one weapon, the spear, and swap it out with a second controller. That's why we need a second controller with the sword, which is level two. And then we swap back to the spear, which happens to be, well, the game is not prepared to level down a weapon if that happens. And it's simply every single frame, I think, or every second frame, I'm not sure, it will basically charge up another level of the weapon charge. And to give you a perspective, this just now was about a level 80 attack. And usually, <laughs> the maximum level you can pre uh, prepare your weapon to load up for is level 8 in the end game. So that's quite a difference. So essentially, we are dealing the maximum out of amount of damage possible with a few issues. Well, that's for later. So I think that's a good time to read some donations. All right, to start with, the Simon Victim remix, which currently has 23 minutes left. Uh, Mega Man 2 is winning by a dollar over Kid Icarus. So for anyone doing Kid Icarus, you may want to get on that or keep Mega Man 2 in the lead. Who knows? Um, we have a $100 donation from Jason6223. Um, I've watched many charity streams on SDA now and they never disappoint. Lots of friends and family have fallen to cancer in the world around me these past couple of years, so take these $100 and stuff them in cancer's ugly face. Uh, $60 from Bowie Alexander. Hi there all, greetings from the... So... I don't know, something, some word, I think it's misspelled, UK. Bowie here, I wanted to firstly congratulate everyone at the event for their amazing work. Last year I found out about this wonderful marathon which got me into speedrunning. I've never looked back. I lost my grandfather to lung cancer a few years back, which sucks, quite frankly. He was a good man and he'd be overwhelmed without the love you're showing. Uh, keep on fighting a good fight and help people in the okay. future. I hit the left one. So, and here you can see it once again. He charges up his weapon to, well, the maximum level, swaps to a lower level weapon, and this weapon overcharges. And the enemy dies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice little cameo by the boss team. Yeah, I killed the second boss. So, also, for some reason, the, bo the boy cannot move during uh, magic rope animation. <laughs> However, the sprite and the girl can still move. So what we just did is the boy called up the magic rope to get back to the entrance of the cave. And me as the sprite simply ran further into the trigger for the cutscene with Undini. So you have that conversation now at the entrance of the screen, which looks a bit weird since Basically, the girl and the sprite are stuck now, and only the boy can move out. 
Yeah, if I wanted to, I could just leave this controller here and I couldn't do anything. But I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Actually, I guess you could do that. It's true. You can. I have one of my controllers. Yes, indeed. I did that all practice. We have a $50 from donation from Tony Cozens. Secret of Mana is my favorite game. Been waiting for this run. Love seeing all the glitches and speed runs. Good luck to the runners and keep up the good work with the marathon. Thank you. Uh, $50 from Sky Dragon. Hey guys, great marathon so far. Secret of Mana is so high. Put my money towards Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Uh, $25 from Cyberbot X. It's time for the mana tree to be saved. Good luck to Singer PA and Yagamoth and their young. Mana tree? There's a mana tree? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Spoilers. Yes. Too many spoilers on that one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he always gets landed on. Uh, we have a $20 donation from Soli. Thank you all for this great event. Listening to Secret of Mana music instantly brings back so many childhood memories. Uh, a $20 donation, donation from Techly FR. Nice AGDQ, I love it. from Shadow Draft, Secret of Mana Hype, Crushers Games, Stinger PA, and Yagamoth. It's going to be a fun time. $20 animation from Corodius. I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you. So there are a lot of little optimizations we can do, especially to controllers. For example, um, for every screen transition, there is a tiny little bit of lag, or sometimes a little more. So, we let here three enemies spawn, so none of the enemies are on the left. Unfortunately, we got hit, but that doesn't really matter. So, in any case, um, as I said, up to 23 frames, which is about a third of a second, we can save by... by quite simply uh, letting one controller run in and the other one can move for some reason already earlier. So by default we already gain about a minute or two minutes. I'm not sure how much. I think it's about a minute. A minute, okay. It's about a minute we save by simply having two players online instead of one. And in a one player two controller run, we cannot save quite as much time. So. Usually the fire guy is here is not as trolly as in he simply stands around until he gets killed. But this time around he decides to disappear instantly, which costs a bit of time. But with a of good timing, he can die. And this was unfortunately a low damage roll. Ah, good. Yes, got it. Okay, this was unfortunately a low damage roll, but as a backup, we essentially simply cast one freeze, and he will die to that, since he only has about 815 HP, I guess? Yeah. So yeah, it costs a bit of mana, but... It doesn't really matter, because we're going to get a mana refill. Oh yeah, that's right. Water palace. We can't do that thing. Do we have it? Do you have to cast it? I don't know. So we're just going to mash because neither one of us knows who has text. <laughs> yeah, that's a frequent problem actually. also use the magic rope here and then trigger the mana seed. However, the problem is, as you can see, the characters walk in the cutscene pretty far down there, and essentially we would land right behind the entrance, so it wouldn't help us at all. 
In fact, we would have to use the magic rope again to get back to the entrance, <laughs> which yeah. is a bit weird. The one we use in Undine's cave is actually the only useful opportunity to use it. Yeah. It's all, the one in Undine's cave only saves a few frames at most, I think. But it looks cool, so why not? So, also here we cannot use the magic rope, otherwise we would land right back at the entrance of the Earth Temple. I think it's the Earth Temple. Underground palace. Same difference. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Originally I played the PAL version, so I, I'm still not used to all the names in English. So yeah, for a quick second there I unselected the second controller, so I could actually run without losing stamina. Or, yeah, that's essentially it. So there are a lot of those little optimizations. And you will see them throughout the run. I will not point every single one of them out. That would be way too much. But also one thing to note, we only had about four days of practice uh, before the marathon, since in case anyone is wondering, I'm Swiss. And that's quite a bit away from America. So we couldn't practice before this event. But I feel like it shaped up really well. There are still a lot of minor optimizations we could do and we are not going to force since that would be really high level. But overall, it's going to be pretty solid up here. Yeah, we pick up on each other's player pretty quickly. Yeah, that was really nice, actually. So here, the first ruins are actually pretty interesting place. I have to go. Yeah. And the first ruins are interesting because it's very specific on how we move. Because sometimes we can disarm an enemy by simply moving in a certain way, walling, uh, running against the wall, or basically uh, removing some randomness by hitting an enemy instead of simply trying to run past him do we could. As I said, most of the rooms there, yeah, that sort is infamous. Most of the times, we have about a 80, uh, 50 to 80 percent chance of succeeding with our strategy. Oops, wrong way. And that's about it. The 50 to 60 percent uh, is about as good as it can get. As I said, there I believe the reason he used a medical herb there was just to cancel out the effects of that spell. Yes, yeah, indeed. The slowdown would have slowed me down considerably. You would move at half speed. Yes, as if you were constantly charging dash. up a weapon. Dashing is about 50% uh, faster than actually walking. So that's the reason why often we want to dash quite a bit. So, and here the next boss is actually the first boss which has an evasion rating, which means he has a 40% chance of straight up dodging our attack, which means it is purely random whether we will hit him and kill him in one shot or not. We have to be prepared for that, so I will basically move the sprite right in front of his face. Well, it's a face wall. Mm -hmm. um, wall face. Um, yeah, essentially absorb all spell damage since most bosses target most of the spell uh, to the nearest character. Also, it's quite ironic that a wall is the first enemy that actually has an evasion rating. <laughs> so yeah, I'm right in this. I'm basically with me chill right now doing nothing. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, when I played this as a kid, I always just assumed that the game had really, really, really bad hit detection, but that's actually evasion. The yes. game doesn't give you any kind of obvious sign that enemies evade your attacks, that you, you just whiff, basically. Yes, it does. Really, really bad hit detection. Well, that too, yeah. <laughs> it's not as bad as you think. Yeah, it's actually pretty predictable. Yeah. It's fine. Ah. It's, yeah, to go. Yeah. And for some reason, even though he has the first controller active and he killed the boss, I still get to mash through the casting, the text. I don't know what's up with that, but I guess it works. Nice. That was excellent chair RNG. 
as in he can walk all over the place until we can talk to him. But that's all. <laughs> <laughs> also, you can walk backwards. That's the thing. You can run backwards too. Yeah. We can back walk backwards through the city, in theory. But that will slow us down. Just no. Well, backwards it would. Yeah, sideways, I so. So yeah, it doesn't uh, cost any time to, uh, doing this, by the way. So you're safe for that. It's a technique called moonwalking. All you do is hold R and B at the same time. Or L works too. Or L. That bouncy thing is going to play a very important role later on in the run, too. Spoilers. Uh, we hope. Well, we hope, actually. There's we had a lot of trouble with it early in practice <laughs> yeah. for no apparent reason. It's interesting. I got it. So, don't forget to save on the kill, right? Yes. So, yeah, there are quite a few safety saves we are going to do because um, for some enemies, they can straight up kill us if we are simply unlucky, and for others it is so finicky and one tiny mistake can basically also spiral into our deaths, and we don't want to lose too much time overall. So those safety saves are pretty much required for Madison's safety. <laughs> Not to be! It's the worst enemy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor Save me. So yeah, in case Watching you control where you can drop a ghost. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Oops. I got it. Mm -hmm. So, the next boss is pretty interesting in the sense of He's quite dangerous in case the boy misses his attack and doesn't kill him outright. In practice, we kill him every single time with uh, the first attack, and I'm pretty sure this won't happen right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, marathon luck is definitely going to bite. Yes. The reason why it's pretty important to kill him with the first shot is there is a good chance he will hit the boy and right up moogle him. And moogling the boy means we have to set up the overcharge glitch again, heal the boy and unmoogle him. And yeah, that's about that. So I, th uh, yeah, we called that one. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh oh, you're immune. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that probably wouldn't be one if I missed. Yeah, he would have moved you. We have one in the Moogle counter already. So that's yeah. Nice. So yeah. Also, um, the kill roll is pretty infamous for. Even though you hit, you get a low damage roll. Uh, again, about 20 to 30 percent of the time. Safe. Yes. On the right. Okay. And even though you hit the hit Kilroy, he will survive because he has almost a thousand HP. So we are going to save here because the next boss is the Jabberwocky. The Jabberwocky is uh, pretty interesting in the sense of he has. Every single boss has that actually. Uh, action and a reaction ability. The action ability can be anything and the reaction can be anything. So for the Killroy to kill us outright, we have to hit him but not kill him, which means a low damage roll, which is in itself already about 16%, I think, chance. I'm to not happen. sure what it is. Plus, uh, there. Yeah, that's about 16% chance to happen. Plus, he needs to both times cast either Acid Rain or Poison Gas, which is also a relatively low chance of happening. So, even though it's a very low chance of happening, it can still outright happen, and it's outside of our control, so be better safe in front of it. <laughs> Usually, obviously, in a normal speedrun, we wouldn't save at all until, well, in a special place. That's one way to put it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's hard. So right now we have about 
five minutes left on the Simon Vicklin NES song remix, and currently Kid Icarus is now in the lead with $700 to Mega Man 2 with 651 Just saying again, that's five minutes. If you want to see Mega Man 2, you should donate. Okay, good. Nice. Running through that corridor with the uh, fishman is actually pretty tricky. First controller has it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, second one. Yeah, running through that corridor with the fish is about a 50% chance to get through without being harassed by those fishmen. And so it's pretty lucky if we get through. And on average, it's our best option. Also, by the way, hitboxes are interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, hitboxes in this game work like this. A melee weapon will have double the reach in boss fights, and this boss uh, has a very weird hitbox. Ah, miss. So that was a miss, or an actual miss, as in an evasion. There so yeah, that was basically... <laughs> That was basically a hit from very far away. We could stand even further away and still hit him, because for some reason his <laughs> hitbox goes from about his belly button way below his feet. And since melee weapons have double the reach, um, we have, we can stand really far away. Yeah. So hitting his head will not do anything, by the way. Oops, oops. Okay. That happened. Right, 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 right. Yeah, you can do that, by the way. <laughs> wow. It's only a few monocytes you can actually do like that, but... Yeah, we only just figured that out in practice, by the way. So, you can only uh, do that if the monocytes are glowing, and for some reason those have a larger hit rate, uh, activation radius. So that's very handy to do. It saves a few frames, but it looks really nice. Also, by the way, we are always trying to sidestep stairs wherever possible, since, as you can clearly tell, running <laughs> again, um, I don't know what it is. Running on stairs is actually very slow. Every other frame you stop for five frames or something like that, it's a lot of time loss. So, uh, if we can get off the stairs really quickly, that's really beneficial. So, and finally, after about 15 minutes, we are out of the first area and into the upper lands. And this is where the run starts be, uh, getting a bit more interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. Slowly but surely. You'll think spring beef, right? Yes. Okay. I should have used Canon Travel to get to the marathon this year. Probably would have had less <laughs> weather problems. Yeah, that would be pretty fast. Although I feel like without a parachute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Here we have to talk with any Moogle, so Stinger is trying to capture a Moogle <laughs> and talk to him. <laughs> Successfully captured. Yes, that was actually pretty much perfect. And so, uh, I take the pebbles, by the way. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. And now it's on my turn to use the overcharge attack. For some reason, I have two controllers as in one upside down. Uh, that's my technique of using two controls at once. Um, it gives me a little bit more freedom with walking around while having two controllers. So that's pretty handy. I missed the first one. I think that's a good one. Yeah, okay. You want to have to go with the attack. By the way, those petals are horrible. They have actually boss level evasion. I'm not joking about that. <laughs> yeah. You have a 40% chance to miss them. It's really annoying. Oh, so, nice. okay. So that was actually a really good pebbles because we killed them relatively quick. <laughs> I had them take up to a few minutes until they finally decided to let me go. So they can be really horrible. By the way, we hate owls. Owls are one of the worst enemies. <laughs> wow. So, and the door goes up to the right. Oh, that's me. Yeah. So yeah, the AI has the tendency to run into everything. 
So we have to be relatively careful about manipulating the AI characters. Actually, um, that was me. Yeah, but whatever. <laughs> in any case, AI, that's AI the general AI. theme. Um, we have, in general, very specific paths we take to not get hit by uh, AI, well, like enemies for the AI. And it usually, you have the buffer, I take that one. Just so I have something. Oh, there I go. Speaking of weird hitboxes, this guy has a pretty yeah, weird um, one. Yeah, the hitbox for this guy, his beak is actually a shield. So if you come in contact with his beak, you will not damage him. So okay, nice. nice. So, yeah. so you have to hit him from the back or the top of the head. Exactly. If you hit uh, his beak during any point of your attack, you will do zero damage. And that's what most people uh, basically didn't realize, I guess. I always had to use no magic to kill this guy. Yeah, that's a good one. I think point. I just soft myself. Yes, I did. <laughs> I walked down for that. So, <laughs> Oops. there is a chance, well, actually not a chance, that you can soft lock uh, your game if you walk behind the tree after killing the spring beak. <laughs> and I did that during a pretty good run, so that was not great. So, I go down right. What? I go down right. Yes, you go down right, I go down left. Exactly. So hopefully you will see some of the screen manipulation and running manipulation that a two-player run can do. Maybe it will work out, hopefully. So sure. obviously the old way running is much faster, but we cannot run in a curve. We only can run in a straight line, unless... Also saving here, because it costs barely any time. Okay, we can't run in the curve, can't run in the curve unless we basically block each other's movement by moving the screen. You cannot get too far uh, from each other, so that's pretty handy. We haven't figured out many places where we can do that, only so far. So, so, also, I want to the left here a little bit higher, so it spawns more rabbits, well, silk tails, those guys on the top which is pretty good. So. The NES song remix has come to a close just a few minutes ago, and Kid Icarus won with $772 being donated for it. I thought I was poor. Yeah, and that with that, we have okay. now Thank donated uh, currently $290,000. So basically, what is this is one adaption we did. Uh, technically, it would be faster if I would select uh, my character right here, but here in this town, I would have to unselect my character since it lacks so much. And so, yeah, I can select it again. Very soon. Also, the first skip of the run is coming up right about now. Here, Stinger with his AI character will straight up <laughs> move through that uh, mushroom <laughs> and see by simply repeatedly pressing select again and again. Also, this area is incredibly, incredibly annoying if you have three, two AI characters running around. <laughs> <laughs> but if already with two players, it's much better. It's amazing how much better that is. That's uh, I take oh, the sprite. Okay, I've got the one now. I do? Okay. Those owls are, by the way, very annoying. They cast confusion almost all the time. I'm pretty amazed they didn't up to now. Uh, <laughs> nice call. <laughs> you are that one. <laughs> MD luck. So yeah, actually they've been pretty nice so far. That's surprising. So as soon as you're confused, uh, they will actually hunt you down. As in, they attack so quick, they will stun lock your character, and you cannot move at all. Oh, wow, two of them are. Yep. I've used two backwards controls, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I cannot cast spells until it's normal again. Oh, It right. should be normal about now. It also can't silence. 
Yeah. It's, that's the minor effect, I guess. Usually, that doesn't matter, even though the spell itself is called silence. Should I get the point? Yeah, I'll switch off. OK. In the next room. That's fine. Little spray is backwards. Yes. Oh, I'm spray. Nine. I'm out. Whatever. Yeah. That's one of the things uh, we oh, have nine. to consider. Because since we only have a few days to practice, a lot of have to be, wow, really? Really? OK, good. <laughs> OK. A lot has to be on the fly. Sit down here. Well, backwards. Even the menus are backwards, by the way, which is pretty weird. Uh, spell lock. So yeah, basically, it would be much faster to not use spell lock right here. Oh, for me. OK, I got it. But nice. it's much safer to use a spell which does no damage at all simply for locking down the boss's movement, especially for the Great Bike, but this is very handy. Since, yeah, he can wreck you pretty bad. In our practice room just before, we realized we should probably spell lock again, since in our actual runs, we don't spell lock, uh, spell lock down the boss, uh, most bosses anymore, except for a few. There's a you towards the end of the run that will be using these spells to lock them down. Yeah, so it's can't do anything. pretty much fun to So also there is coming another scene up where I can't lock off and Sting has to do the work, which is pretty nice. Yeah, I carry this tune. Yeah, he's basically <laughs> doing all the work and then doing the talking. I guess that works out. Mm -hmm. Well, most of the time. Oh, I switch off right now. Okay. Okay. Also, real quick, I would like to donate something. Who I, uh, do I have to go to give this to? Because I would like to have those prizes as well. Those are some pretty amazing prizes. Some people who've played this game might remember that you have to go to the Ice Palace in the Ice Country to get the Fire Seed before going to the desert, but the problem with that is you can't actually go to the desert directly from the Ice Country afterwards until you've cleared the Sand Ship cutscene, which is what we're going for now. So it actually ends up being about 20 seconds faster optimally, and it, that's in the tasks. So. It ends up being even speed more up. for real-time runs. Oops. Also, by the way, I'm still not playing. The reason for this is the upcoming cutscene, which has a little witch in it. If you select the sprite and come from the left, um, normally characters are supposed to walk in the middle and spread out, but for some reason, you will see they will get stuck midway running. For some reason, they never separate out. Yep. Um, it makes it easier to get to the uh, exit up here. Excellent. So, hey, I didn't know you can run there. So, on the sand ship, we get separated. And I selected the boy right now. The reason for this is the upcoming boss is it's pretty handy if you can move around with two characters at once. So, that's why we decided to uh, let me do this boss. Also, he is pretty significantly more difficult if you are only one player with two controllers. The reason for this is, um, if you are unlucky, the boss will, you will miss the boss, and he is programmed to rush at you and go to the other side of the arena. Um, it takes a lot of time if that happens. By having three current characters controlled by actual humans, we can easily avoid that issue and simply step aside also moonwalking <laughs> also this guard here is a troll 
in at least two of my rounds. He went out the door, don't go there, and I couldn't go outside for about half a minute <laughs> since he blocked the exit. So yeah, that's a thing. I think we got it. Also, the sprite face is amazing right here. I really like it. <laughs> so shout out to Luigi Messer who should have been our third rounder and unfortunately couldn't make it. It was to have been a really amazing three player round, but I hope it's also really good as two player. Yeah. It would have been a little bit harder to coordinate with three people, but it would have been so much better to just have no AI going anywhere. We are moving all three characters manually right now. I think you're a little high. Nice. nice. Excellent. This is the last boss we can one shot. Also, as you may notice, we stop the overcharge at specific levels. Um, we basically know which level is going to result in which attack. Often it's actually really good to use an overcharge normal attack as if you were normally slashing, but do a ton of more damage. Sometimes we use uh, special attacks and stuff. Uh, I gotcha. Okay. Sometimes we use uh, special attacks for various reasons. For example, special attacks have invincibility, and which is pr really handy. Also, they have a much larger attack radius and attack duration, so that's also really good. We didn't use... I don't think we've used enough medical orbs. We used two, so we cannot restock. <coughs> Is that two or three? That was three. Okay, good. So yeah, menu optimization is quite the thing, by the way, here. So, in the next portion, Stinger will switch to the girl, equip us uh, everything. I did. Excellent. <laughs> equip everything, and then immediately go out of the equipment and cast uh, Frost Saber. Um, Frost Saber is pretty interesting in the sense of um, <laughs> it actually does not apply Frost Element. It only attacks a small attack bonus, but it doesn't change your actual weapon element, which is pretty strange if you think about it because the Frost Skyguess, which is one of the next bosses, actually casts Frost weapons on you, which would be pretty clever if they were actually Frost elements. <laughs> <laughs> but since that's how it is, it's only handy for us. Also, Frost weapons have the unique ability of freezing enemies, which is really handy, especially in this area. This area is really difficult to get through without freezing all mm -hmm those wolves, because they have a large attack radius and are extremely aggressive. It's making me hungry for my wings. I think. Mm. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it should work out. I'm a bit slow here. Yeah, that was a slowdown. We were able to cancel it earlier without the medical herb animation earlier, but... That was probably <laughs> not a so we spawned up there a wolf, so in the middle there are usually three wolves spawning. So by doing this we basically manipulated the spawns. Oops. And for the next enemy. Ooh. Okay. Again, we have only have about a 60% chance to hit those enemies, so I'm pretty amazed we are hitting that often right now. Yeah, never mind. I was too far away. That was not actually at all. Okay, that was really nice. So yeah, basically what we decided on is Stinger takes the bosses which 
require more precision than movement and <coughs> might take those which take more movement. Since I feel like Stinger is more consistent in getting the correct attack, mm -hmm. but I can move around a bit well. Yeah, he's able to move characters around in cutscenes a bit easier than I am. So it really helps out for those that you have to get around the map. So, and for a very, very short time, one of my favorite music tracks plays. Yeah, it replaces this one. Which is my least favorite. Yeah, mine too. Oops. I didn't know we can open the menu then. I think you pressed Y. Uh, yeah, I accidentally pressed Y and said no. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, by the way, subtle optimization here. We selected the sprite of the girl. Hang on, music. And it's over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Subtle optimization here. Uh, we selected both the sprite and the girl since the boy is right behind the stove. The stove is considered an NPC and an uh, AI controlled character can move right through the stove. We can't, so that's the small optimization. Just want to play from that. Also, Ninja Turtles. Where are you? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> like I said, like yeah. Yaga said, Ninja. Yeah, those turtles are amazing. They get us every time somehow. Also, this screen is one of the worst in terms of enemy spawns. It gives you three enemies in a very, very small field to get through. Also, those howlers, the wolves, have gigantic hitboxes. Attack radius. Look, look. You will no, never want to get hit by those blue slimes because they freeze you and either use a medical herb to undo the freezing or simply, well, wait it out, which takes about 10 seconds. <coughs> oh. Oops, I swapped characters. Not quite. I will swap so. Yeah, and that's one of the RNG elements. Nothing okay. we can do about that. Wow, really? That's oh, impressive. No, she didn't get Moogle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moogle countless still on one. So, there you go. Mm -hmm. So, in this area it lags quite a bit. So, you can clearly see Stinger will try to get a very specific overcharge attack. This looks very cool if he gets it. No. Next one. Oh, got it. Nice. Okay. Also, one of the next major glitches coming up also. Split up. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, the blue slime spawned in the bottom. It doesn't usually do that. Yeah, it could have simply walked past. Whatever. Okay, next uh, glitch is we cast something, hit the rope ball, and run through the wall. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> so, there we go. <laughs> the way that works is by hitting the rope ball, we activate. Oops. Actually, you can explain it. Otherwise, I'm Okay, gonna, that's uh, fair. <laughs> okay. Um, Basically, we, by hitting a rope pull, we activate a rope pull check. That means uh, the game checks whether the character is standing in the right place, has the right weapon, hits the right rope pull to do well the jump over a rope pull gap. But it freezes the game for a short period of time, and usually you are unable to do anything during that period. But by simply casting a spell, it will cancel out the spell. Also, he's a jerk right now. Yes. Okay. Both of the units decide to disappear immediately. Yeah. So and usually control. you are unable to walk while you are hitting a rope hole, but by uh, using a spell prematurely, it is pretty easy to wow. avoid that issue. <laughs> wow. So yeah, if we hit him once, we only need to hit him twice. 
he has a pretty good evasion rating, mm -hmm. by the way. Unfortunately, his magic attacks don't have much of a punch because he targets all of us, and that way he can see attack. Yes. Hello, hero. Thank you. Buffer. This RNG. Yes, that's yes, the RNG, basically. Yep. Literally, up to now we played perfectly, and there's nothing we could do about that. Now we can hit. Another dodge. Another? <laughs> I wait for it. Go. Yeah. Uh, buffer. Sorry about that. Okay. Be I could show it won't work out. It might work. So yeah, when the girl is crowd controlled, I have to buffer for him, which is not what you usually are used to. <laughs> that sure. So I would suggest you take another charge attack. Yeah. That's, That's a good, good one. one. It's one of my favorite charge attacks. It's quick and really precise. Oops. <coughs> really? <laughs> so yeah, he just gave us rough weapons. As I pointed out earlier, they don't actually have frost elements to them. Also, yeah, just in case. Forgot to add that element into the code. Yeah. And so rather than that completely. In theory, we would do half damage, but in actual life, we don't. Nice, Fine, finally. Right. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, we saved Santa. Yeah. Merry Christmas. So, that's how a fight in Secret Mana can look. You can, uh, by playing well and deciding the right things at the right time, you can essentially tone down a lot of the time loss you would get by bad RNG. But overall, there are a few key spots like this fight specifically, uh, which can absolutely screw you over and you can do nothing about that. Other than that, it's really amazing to play this game. Second control. Oh yeah, right. It's really amazing to play this game. Um, basically work around all those things that can happen. Also, a small demonstration here, by the way, because of why we don't really want to deal with AI characters. Both of now are, are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the secret of AI. <laughs> yeah. Both are now AI controlled balance. <laughs> Good job, Square Saw. <laughs> the pathfinding is spectacular. <laughs> So Santa did, us, did, did them a favor by giving them the frost weapons for the back track. Yeah, that was yeah. actually really nice. So that's a positive mode. So that's the best thing oh. Santa, uh, the frost guys can do is either die immediately or give us frost, frost weapons, which are really handy, actually. Does the higher level frost saber give you more charges? Or yes. yes, you can use more charge, or you can frost you more enemies that way. Yes, indeed. It doesn't actually increase the damage, though. It still remains at about 10% damage bonus. So, oops. That doesn't matter. Okay. And here, as you can see, we can go straight to Kakara. Usually he would say he doesn't have enough uh, gunpowder gun powder to blow you over to Kakara, and you would have to go buy him a tango. That's because the, the desert sandship cutscene was not completed yet. I think we have a bit time for donations. Yeah. Yeah. We have a twenty dollar donation from Shadow M. How can I not donate on one of the best games out there? Mana hype. Um, a fifty dollar donation from Allison Hell. Uh, shout outs to the boys and girls behind the scenes for doing an awesome job and to Mecca for making so much beautiful art. Uh, fifty dollars from Professor NES. Always wanted to see a co op secret of mana run live. Uh, it's even more awesome being streamed. Best of luck. Looking forward to the awesome breakage. Uh, $100 from Chrono Joel. Uh, hi, Chrono Joel here. Uh, both my mother and mother-in-law are breast cancer survivors, so what you're doing here is really important to me. I hope to contribute to running my, run myself in the future. 
um, $50 from Captain Falcon. <laughs> Yagamoth's two-hand style is intense, but he needs to tape the controllers together. Secret of Mana is the best game. <laughs> Gotta throw him in for the Prince and Pearl. Uh, $20 from Luigi Meister. Hey guys, Luigi Meister here. Sorry, sorry again for not being able to make it, but things happen. This is obviously the best game to donate during. Frank for one cycle buff. Yeah, thank you, Luigi Meister. As I said, he would be our third co-op partner, and it would have been really amazing to have him here. But the things happen, as he said. Uh, Thirty dollars from L. Christian. Hi, everybody at AGDQ. Let's see one of my childhood memories get broken. Thanks to everybody involved in making GDQ events always a success. $50 from Socrates Johnson, one of my favorite games ever. Good luck on Secret of Mana. $100 from Deathly Cloak, donating during one of my favorite games from way back when. My mother survived cancer, so I'm really glad to see another excellent ADD cube to help ensure others don't have to deal with the same issue. Keep up the good work, guys, and be proud of yourselves. So yeah, what we just did there was another small walk through the wall by simply hitting a rope pole there. It saves a little bit of time and <laughs> most importantly, it saves actually uh, the trouble of going next to those archer guys, which can be really random. Before we figure out we could do a rope pole skip there, it was oh, always a pain to yeah. try and buy them. Wow. Oh, that's unlucky. But I can survive it. Yeah. So yeah, most of the time this Minotaur guy is really easy to beat. He doesn't cause much of a trouble. Ready to mash? Yes. So let's see whether we get the next trick. It's a bit random, but we have a good chance at it. Basically what we could do here is remote talk to the seed. The cutscene stops us just in front of the, uh, basically spawn point of the seed. And I think it's when the seed just spawned and you hit B, it is always true to, talk, uh, to interact with, if that makes sense. And yeah, you can basically talk to the seed right from where we were standing. Unfortunately that didn't happen this time. I would like to restock some. Uh, what do we have to restock? Hang on. Let me think about this. I don't think we have anything to restock. Let me think about this. I think medical orbs are actually clear. I'm not sure. I can check real quick until we land. Yeah. Simply check real quick. As in, we want to really make sure that the run will actually complete. Um, if we <laughs> if we don't have enough might resources help. to spend, there could potentially be a problem in some places. By the way, it's very interesting in how the third character is programmed, because it is basically tacked on a little bit. And here, usually we need a bit of a different setup to get past a cutscene. But here, I simply... Uh, you disconnect the third controller, and that allows the, the first controller to move all the way through. And there's a trigger there normally, but instead you just walk past the guard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The trigger basically makes the guard walk up and request a password. There are three ways to get past him without giving him the password, so that's something. And one of the ways requires a very precision precise movement, but it's much better if we don't have to do that. Also, uh, the, basically what happens is the third character or controller, if he gets disconnected for any reason, the game is programmed to release that character. And so he is AI controlled again. And if we talk to an NPC at this point, 
Oh oh. Use the wind. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. That'll work too. These slimes are really scary. Let him spawn. We let him okay. spawn three uh, blobs. So down here, less enemies should spawn, or especially not the next blob. What in the practice happened is we spawned this block down here. Um, the main character got frozen as a snowman, and we walked into this cutscene, which sort of lost the game. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that before. So that's pretty amazing. I knew that, but I only thought of that as we were going into the cutscene. Oops. Yeah, you can check. Yeah, we will quick check that. Uh, check the candies. Six. Candies? Two. Okay, Two. that's one of them. Well, that's fine. You can try to duplicate them. Yeah, I'll do that in this next stream. Yeah, that's good. I need to try something that, don't I? You should equip it again. The other thing. The helmet. Right. Thank you. Yeah, we have with, uh, yes. eight candies again. So that's better than buying because it's much faster. Oh, I have to unselect uh, the character right here because once again in town it's very laggy. And if we have two or three players active during this town, it will take mu a lag much more. <coughs> also, right after this cutscene, we have another chance at a remote interaction. I really hope we get this one because that's more, much more awesome. Even though it costs a little bit of time, it looks really interesting. Also, hang on, we have to go back, we have to save. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that, yeah. It's really crucial that we save right here because a lot in here can go wrong. Even though in our practice, none of our practice runs uh, ended here. As in, it was always really solid, but we know how much can go wrong from our single player runs, mm -hmm. so we really should go and save. I'm glad you remembered that. Yeah. Come on. Oh, okay. Basically, what could happen here, I also like. Okay. Basically, what could happen here is uh, we can open the chest on the balcony from down there. <laughs> <laughs> this is, again, I'm not quite sure how that works, but that's the thing, simply remote talking. I think it's because the game doesn't know where we are, so yeah, it just puts us somewhere. Yeah, it's either that the game doesn't know where we are, or it doesn't know yet where the chest is because it just spawned or something like that. At some point, I remote talk to, uh, well, I can't connect it up here. In any case, the second ruins here are very specific on how we want to travel through them. Simply move a little bit to the side here, not get hit by that. Try to get through, through those, simply straight up. Here, the first player does uh, not want to run, and usually the AI doesn't get hit. As a, again, most of the time, there is simply only a chance that everything will go okay and as planned, but we are pretty consistent on this one too. So here, blue block, block block, and we run past. And here, next room we want to simply hit that guy before he hits us, and that's pretty much random whether we get that or not. Mm -hmm. Also, synchronization. Oops. You step on the switch. Okay. Yeah, this is also a uh, benefit of the two-player run, stepping on that switch. Is usually in all one player runs, we have to. You step on the switch. Okay. We have to uh, freeze a uh, balloon dose sometimes, otherwise, we will get hit every single time. Also, the spray is almost dead. Just yeah, that was unfortunate. <laughs> now he is dead. Yep. Yeah, that's the AI. You can't keep Batman down. 
<laughs> okay. Get up. Oops. I messed up. So who are you? I am the girl now. Okay, let's play. Yeah, we are used to my quick boy. Yes. We are used. I want to heal the boy, by the way. Right around here. No okay. next. Let's heal him in the next room. Yeah, we are used to um, quickly slot, uh, swapping characters, both of us running. I'll select, uh, swap. I'm a bit early anyways. Yeah. So we are both used from our one play to control run, run up to Quickly swap character and get in position once again. Nice. nice. Uh, to basically recover from any mishaps or quirks that can happen where, everywhere, I guess. Like that boss that we messed up on. Yeah, that was the wall. Unfortunately, we killed him already. But he's That's pretty actually unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, he is pretty special. If we mess up and get the wrong charge attack and accidentally <coughs> kill both of the eyes before we kill the middle portion. Bad things happen. Very bad things. If you've never seen that, uh, don't try it. <laughs> Essentially what happens, he has two special attacks, which do a ton of damage. They do a ton of damage and control your characters so you can't open the menus with them. Yes. And recovering from that attack is extremely different, uh, difficult, especially if he decides to grab the boy. He stabbed him in the head with a spear and that woke him up. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. Mm -hmm. On a side note, the next boss is basically the most infamous, one of the most infamous, oh. the speedrun. Because it's not that he is the most random, it's simply in case he decides to play around with you, there's literally nothing you can do. At least for the uh, Ice Geigers, you get to a chance to hit him every once in a while. For the vampire, in my first run, he stayed in the air for five minutes. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> and that's not too uncommon. Yeah. He has two things he can do. He can fly around or he can jump around on the ground. Right now he's deciding to fly around. <laughs> and we can't do anything to him. Oh, is he coming now? Yes. Yeah, hit him. Oh. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I get the right attack. The crit. <laughs> <laughs> you have to buffer for me next time. And we use the spell walk down on him. Yes, and we position, uh, you have to buffer, uh, our characters intentionally in front of him. So he actually tries to grab ah, them. That was a miss, unfortunately. Ah, uh, yeah. That should have been the last clip. So, yeah. A miss, another miss. So we basically uh, position our characters right in front of him. After a hit, he tries to grab them. Nice. <laughs> there we go. Nice. That was pretty good, actually. Pretty good. That was really nice RNG. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don't worry, there's another vampire later. A worse one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, real quick, could you run through a roll call for the couch and runners? Right. I'm Stinger PA. I'm Jack uh, I'm Rix. Poexel. PJ. During one of their practice runs, that, that vampire trolled them so badly they had to hit it an extra time <coughs> too because it kept draining their HP. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty bad. I think we had to restock mid-fight, which is not normally possible, by the way. Unless... Right, thank you. I would have missed that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> thank you. So we have all our quirks in the speedrunning. There's basically, I'm really bad at menus and navigating and flying. As in, 
I can't find anything unless I have it written down. And basically, a stinger is pretty much known for uh, choosing the wrong cable, cannon travel location. <laughs> <laughs> and the interesting part is in the current record for one play two controller, which is two hour four minutes. Yes. And some seconds, uh, he actually chose one of the wrong camp travel locations. <laughs> yeah, but so, I still beat his record, so. You just wanted to kill the bee again. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that's not the camp travel I went to, but. Yeah. I take think the scenic road. Yeah. It works out, I guess. Brown so, will be proud. You get the metal mantis. So the metal mount is, is pretty interesting how he works. There are, yeah, that's what usually happens. Uh, there are a few things you can do to manipulate him. <laughs> like how the <laughs> weapons are wrapping to the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he tried to manipulate him there again with the attack. Uh, but wins. unfortunately he's defending right now and he cannot be damaged while he's defending. This was an evasion, so that was 40% chance. Now he has a chance to hit him again. Another image, we have to deal with spray fire. Yeah, definitely. Because he can cast uh, pretty nasty spells. If you want to jump in. I got this one. Yeah, he usually is not a problem, but sometimes it decides to be uh, unhittable. You will be dead if you don't deal with it. Wow, and while he is hitting, he's also Pressure. unhittable. I lost it. <coughs> yeah, sorry about that. I will lock him down with the spell. Okay. So you get time to swap the weapons again. Oh, yeah. This is one of the bosses who usually, usually, is no problem at all. Okay, nice. I can control off the That's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that guy can be scary because if he had cast a gem missile, it would have killed us. Yeah, when there are only two players and he casts a gem missile, he does, does over 200 damage. That's <laughs> what happens in practice once, and I didn't know that can happen. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> Really depressing if that happens. We jumping things. I love those. How did you say? Are they called? They're called barnacle jacks. Barnacle, barnacle jacks. jacks. Huh. Never heard of them. Wow, really? <laughs> I think I never knew they had the name. Yeah, we've always called them yellow jumping things. Anyway, clap, clap, uh, and we go home. Yeah. The SD3 the gives them a name, but it's much longer and very Japanese sounding. Just your controller like I did. Okay, that's fine. I, I, always, I find it kind of fascinating too that there, well I know why, but there's like no one in Japan that speedruns this game, which is usually not the case for JRPGs, and that's because the Japanese version of this game is even glitchier than the English version. Yeah. And mostly in bad ways too. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's glitchier in a very bad way. You take the next boss. Okay. And you hit the switch. Um, yeah, the problem with the Japanese version is it's probably faster, but no one can just try it actually. The reason for this is every single boss has the chance of soft locking. <laughs> every single one. Yeah, unless you open quickly the menu after you defeat the boss, and that can be pretty tricky at times. 
Also, there is a certain manipulation which we will point out a bit later during the next Mac Rider fight we are doing right here. Oh, you hit that? I have no idea why, but I did. That's impressive. This guy's AI is amazing, too. Yeah. Yes. And you can see a little bit of manipulation. <laughs> He's just gonna gas you out with your shots. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, and now the speedrun gets finally interesting. Yeah, Mecca, and thankfully I will be taking it. Yeah, I think Pandora might be here for a while. Yeah. Don't forget to save off the doubles. Yes. Go into Pandora. Somewhere safe. You fly. Yes. So, yeah. As I said, I'm horrible at navigating, and especially if I don't have my splits with where I need to go, <laughs> I leave him to slow. I think I have the hex. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you do. Yep. So normally you have to go pretty much all around the world to do these little side quests. Yes. But we're in a hurry to come here. Got to catch uh, up with the schedule. Indeed. <laughs> pretty much, actually. So here we climbed the mountain, literally. <laughs> As in, it's not only faster, but actually much safer since we, we have no current armor at this point. You have to point to the right. We have no current armor right now, <laughs> so those enemies are actually really dangerous if they catch us. There's been more than a few runs ended here because yeah. bot of the enemies deal so much damage. I need to go. Okay. So here we do a little trick, small little trick. I think you have to be up above the prey. Thank you. That's good. Uh, and we jump over wall. Wow. Just like that, we skipped the spike barrier right there. Yep. And that so that's skips about probably about an hour minutes. or so worth of the game <laughs> that we just that you just skipped. Yeah. Approximately, yeah. Like three or four different dungeons. Yes. Um, basically, if you don't know the game, what we just skipped is the Light Palace, the Moon Palace, the Shadow Palace, and the uh, Visit to Pasnica, which is quite a bit actually for such a little jump. Oh, sorry, you have it. You have it. I've got to love this. Like, I think pretty much every mana game has a part where you're just going around the world and trying to find all the mana spirits. Yeah, except this one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so we are, we are actually not getting the moon, the light, and the darkness spirit. And this has pretty severe consequences later on since they are more or less required. You run into it. Oh, I like this fight. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing, by the way. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Basically, what happens is pretty simple. We die, and the enemies disappear. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know why they made it like this, but if you essentially die, and... How do you say that? Um, your uh, doppelganger disappears of the yeah. character that dies. It's really fast and simple. If you would have to use overcharge, it would take quite a bit of time. Okay, so Pandora? Yes. So here we are going to save once again, because in the storyline, well, as much as we skipped of it, uh, we are, would now go to the Sunken Palace. Sunken oh, Palace, mm -hmm. wait, that's for the Yeah. Stop. Stop. Wait, um, why are you telling me where to go? I don't know the map. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah, in the Sultan Palace, there is going to be another boss fight. It's one of the harder ones, even for a casual play, since he uses wall. And for us, we should get... Uh, no, we have all it. Yeah, we're fine. Uh, for us, it's really tricky, since literally, since we have outdated armor, and every single spell will kill a character if you let it through. Maybe. I've got off. Yeah. So, 
there's the uh, damage cancelling, there we go, which we use a healing item or a medical herb to da cancel the damage out of a boss, essentially. Um, this one is no exception. So he will cast Burst, which is one of the most powerful spells in the entire game. And as I said, it will one-shot any of our characters. So our strategy is to position the sprite right in the middle of his hitbox so he doesn't move. Um, Dark Stalker, who's that? I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> I think we skipped him. Yeah, pass me cut. So what we do is I position the sprite right in the middle of his hitbox. This makes him not move anymore. He will only jump if he is... He will only jump if our characters are to the side of him and not in the middle of him. He can do a lot of dodges. Yeah, heal already this time. Yeah. So yeah, he's using a candy here to cancel out the burst damage. And then I can use another board for the next one. Indeed. So he need, we need to hit him four times. And it's really random in how long it takes until uh, we get those four hits. Nice. Excellent. Nice find. <laughs> it looks real easy, but if we had screwed up, that would have gone south very quickly. Yeah. As I said, it looks easy, but if we make one little mistake somewhere, we are dead. Like, mis like mistiming the healing items. Mm -hmm. yeah. For example, or simply stepping a sp little bit to the side too far or something like that. Also to the side here. Side, <laughs> side. Because that works. As I said, unsealed mana, magic, ma mana seeds have for some reason a larger hitbox and, and interact with them from below. So it gets a bit fun. <laughs> <laughs> And also, the screen also spazzes out for some unknown reason. Okay, so that's not the screen issue. Nope, that's, that's the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Secret of mana, folks. It's amazing. Also, um, as I said, we don't have the moon spirit. Uh, sprite? Spirit? Spirit. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't have the moon spirit, the darkness spirit, and the light spirit. Am I playing? I think you might. Southwest. Thank you. I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna fly too, just in case. Yeah, just. I'm really bad at explaining and doing stuff at the same time, which is why Stinger did yeah, most yeah. of the work earlier. So what we are going to do here is pretty special, mm -hmm. to say the least. I am telling. Yeah. So, what is going to happen is we are saving the game here. Some of you may know there is that trick where you can get the mana sort of early. Yep. Yeah, this run's not to going too good, so... Uh, yeah, I think we're going to reset. We're going to start hey, Can over. you restart the timer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't, really. I hope yeah. the schedule is going to be okay. We yeah. just Basically, need to add hour and a half. We're what still. happens in, with that save file, if we would try to load the save file right now without doing anything else, uh, the game would crash. That's right. Because the game save is corrupted since landing next to a save point with Flammy has various special side effects, such as the location does not get saved. But if we soft reset anywhere by holding the start select on R for about a few seconds, um, we can actually basically reset the game and keep the values where we currently are. And then we load the save state and basically <coughs> save warp into that current scene we are in. What we are doing right now is going to be a bit confusing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. So, as it, it is going to be this cutscene right here yeah. with the with boys the on the bridge, whatever. Soft reset, load the save. We get warped to Porto's village, and... We now have invisible characters. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty special, I guess. So... Southeast? Yes, I mean. This one I know. That's the only one I know so far. <laughs> oh, 
and that why you have those markings on your timer? Yes, I actually absolutely have no idea. I was always idea wondering what those stood for. I absolutely have no idea where to apply usually. Mm -hmm. So, since we have one invisible character in the group, we can walk through walls. <laughs> but only when text boxes are up. Yes, only when text boxes are up. Use so, the one to stun these enemies, because otherwise we'll probably get hit. Yeah, it is very likely that those walls will mess us up. And so we simply tra basically travel backwards through the Grand Palace right now. And this is called the Grand Palace Backwards, uh, appropriately, I guess. And we just hit three triggers there, as in three buttons. Now simply move back into the main room. Oh, that was a bit too early. We simply move back to the main room. Sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the switch, and there's the boss. We just stripped the entirety of the underground palace with two bosses, I think. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then you had to go back down there in order to get the boss to spawn, basically, to make the game think yes. you've already beaten the rest of the palace. That's right. right. Yeah. Exactly. The underground palace is completely uh, ignored at this point. Plus, uh, what's also pretty handy is we didn't have to activate any of those orbs in the Grand Palace, which is the crucial thing. If we couldn't do that, the previous skip where we jumped over those spikes would be absolutely, well, almost useless. Also, walking through walls again. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I got spiked. Uh, I'll switch to the one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not broken at all. Yeah, it's pretty special. Nothing. Control again. The reasons why this is good, like nothing. three hours or so faster than the last time we had this game. In America. Yeah, <laughs> basically the current speed demo archive run is actually not too bad, but it's on the PAL version, which is inherently very slow in comparison because the game speed is simply slower. Also, hang on a second. This fight is really tough because if you make one mess up, it can get pretty ridiculous really quick. I mean, this is kind of a joke in casual play, just because if you drain all of this boss's MP, it can do literally nothing to you, yes. but uh, okay. you can't do that. Stinger already made the best setup he can. He walked the sprite right into Hexa's hitbox, so she will not move around anymore. And by doing this, he can stay out of range with the boy easily. Why did he just go off? Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay, and um, basically Hexa's has a lot of nasty attacks. She has a lot of spells which hurt a lot. Plus, they can give you statuses like the pygmy that the yeah. has. Plus, pygmy. Nice. Oh, Very nice. nice. Uh, um, uh, 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 yeah. If you don't do Hexa specifically like this in a speedrun, because you have literally no armor and pygmy engulfed in flames and what's the other one? Uh, dispel will remove your overcharge attack. Uh, it gets pretty, really bad really quickly. You want to take my card? Yes. OK. So on a side note, as I pointed out earlier, mech riders have pretty special AI. <laughs> yeah, I mean really special. You saw a little bit of it in the second mech rider fight. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I think we are going to wait down here. <coughs> There's a little bit of a faster version here, but that's easy to show it like here. Mm. So, what we are doing is wait for the Mech Rider because he will do literally nothing and simply play slowly at the bottom of the screen around until we hit him. <laughs> the way his AI is programmed is that he tries to get down onto our level, but because we're standing at the bottom, he can't do that. Yeah, quite literally. Can't, could, can't quite get down on our level. Yeah, his hitbox is larger, so he gets blocked by the exit of uh, the bottom of the arena. And he cannot align with us, which he would normally do, and <laughs> charge around. So, so, yeah, he can't really do anything, except cast speed up on us. Yeah, he cast speed up on us for some reason, because he's a moron, I guess. He essentially casts speed up after every single hit. <laughs> so, now for the pure lens, right? 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Longest. <laughs> yeah, we've got what, like 25 minutes or so. <laughs> Just don't get hit. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, about that. I think we have to play. I'm not sure who has it. Whatever. I hope it's not without a controller. Yeah, this is left to land. It's not like it's hard to get where we're going on this one. Yeah, if you forget about it, it's pretty dark. Do we save before it? I don't think we need to. No, we don't. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. We never know who has the cutscene because this game is really quirky. Okay. Simply it's checking that we here. have everything we stop, which is really crucial. As I said, usually in a run we don't restock anything at all. If well, it goes well, but that's relying on a fair bit of randomness. Also, here we get the best possible armor to buy in the game, which will be quite an upgrade compared to what we had before. Real quick. Yeah, we swap out. Yes. <coughs> So yeah, from 21 to 140, from 34 to 240, <laughs> <laughs> and from 10 to 90. As I said, it's quite a difficult. <laughs> All purchased with fine black money too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. First flats go for a watch. Yeah. <laughs> so. What you're about to witness is <laughs> hopefully witness. Next. Hopefully witness, yeah. Oops. Hopefully witness. It's really finicky. No. Didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work out. Um, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to jump up onto that ledge. Is that right? Yeah. I'll That's what that thing's there for, right? Oops. I didn't prefer it. Yeah, that was my fault. So what we are trying to do here is unleash a charged attack from the girl with the sword so she would land on top of that weird thing, whatever that is. <laughs> she might be blocked by the screen scroll. You want me to go to now? <coughs> yeah, let's go. Okay. Over there. Well we can't show that off because it takes no. a while and it may not work. Yeah, it's pretty special. Essentially, what we tried there is make it work over there, but we have a backup. It's a slightly slower, but it works. Um, you want the second controller for that? Yeah. Let's see if I remember how to set it up. I haven't done this in a while. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There we go. So he's hitting the rope pole as he is flying away. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. So he just hit the rope pole. I need to. No, wait, did it? Oh, wait. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's no, right. He hit the rope pole as soon as we basically called Flammy, and this activates the rope pole event. It would be a bit funnier if we actually got the other skip, but that's fine as well. Essentially what usually happens when you land on the mana port this early, you take the strike, is you get the cutscene and you get sent away, basically. You call and flammy meet it again and you are gone. Which is pretty unfortunate, I guess. So they basically got two event the two events of Wait getting onto still. the rope pole and then the barrier take knocking you off the mana fortress to cancel each other out. So yes, bye bye pure lands. Yes. We simply overwrote the cutscene by hitting a rope pole and that cutscene from the rope pole event was executed at the first possible moment, which is as soon as we land. 
all the mana fortress keys are really tricky to play to navigate through quickly. So we have to be a bit, uh, be a bit careful about that. You want Buffy? Yes. I think I'll get. So Buffy is the last boss I will be defeating, essentially, and Sting, Mr. Stinger will take the rest. Since, as I said, I'm better with movement bosses, but he is much better with precise uh, choices for bosses. So, and here we have Buffy. Another annoying vampire, which can stay in the air for as long as he wants. Exactly. Yeah, our signature is pretty good at this point. I do. Okay. Analyzer here to lock Buffy down in his movement and he cannot move during it. It doesn't do damage but it locks him in place so as I said we can basically get an additional hit from that. Yeah and he is evading right now since we literally only have about again a 60% chance to hit him. Yeah. Right now I'm just acting as a shield. Uh, I literally missed that. That was actually my fault. Can you hear it? Yes, that's a good point. I have no idea what he was eating here. Ah. So yeah, he let us do quite a fair amount of damage already. I'm pretty happy about that. Mm -hmm. I was just going to get more. Which was also good though. He grabbed me. He grabbed me. Oh, yeah. Wait, why can't we scroll the screen? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> well, that's a count for that never happened before. Yep. <laughs> I knew we would get at least one during this game. Yeah, I hope. Um, I heal. Okay. Oh, you should cast. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. You might want to get a different charge attack. You, you yeah, said that's earlier. Okay. As I said, Singer is act, currently acting as a meat shield, and hopefully I manage to catch that bugger at some point. I need to heal it. Wait, get first. Or not. No, no I, I miss way too often. I mean, he is really nice, giving us really nice RNG, but on the other hand, he does not get hit at all. Yeah. <laughs> we're giving nice RNG with him staying down here, but we're giving terrible RNG with actually hitting him. There oh, we go. There we go. go. Yeah. Oh. He was actually nice. He doesn't. He didn't cast. He cast a single spell, actually. Yeah, just One. Dark Force. Unfortunately, I hit the boy, but. Yeah. He was nice to us, I guess. So. Here is basically our last stretch where we have to avoid enemies. No, oh, hang on, I'm, oh, I'm way too Yeah, you are. Yep, sorry about that. The last stretch where I don't have to do anything anymore. Okay, I have to select both characters to walk past. Could you please move? Which is a bit tricky, but... If I execute it properly, it's faster than trying to get the AI character uh, to hold for it. This. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah... I should have swapped off the boys so thing you could uh, get it, but... I forgot about it. It's okay, sorry about that. I got the right shot attack at least. Which is nice. So this blob is really interesting. All he does is cast Acid Rain occasionally. If you were to cast your own spells, he would actually also counter with his own spell. Which is pretty interesting. But like this, you simply hope he never hits the boy with his Acid Rain. Um, or doesn't cast at all. You have to buffer. And 
yeah, eventually we will kill him. Wow, nice. that was really that nice. was amazing. Nice. That's definitely the best RNG we've gotten on him since we arrived here. Yep, that was really nice. How bad is it if he acid rains the boy? Well, uh, depends. You can cancel it with a candy and it doesn't really matter too much other than the time loss. But if you don't cancel it, it can knock the boy away and possibly keep him from even being nice able one. to reach yeah, with his attacks. Sense. And that would effectively soft lock the game. <laughs> yeah, kind of. He can kill us eventually. Yeah, he would kill us eventually, but for all intents and purposes, it would be dead. Oh, I messed up. You should be on Sprite. So yeah, by the way, we just power to grind it about five levels. Yeah. Because yeah, because we're still only leveled, we got about five levels there. So yeah, we have to really pay attention to not get hit everywhere. Some hits are fine, even if not desired. But some of the enemies are way stronger than others. For example, those orange night ninja, whatever things, they spawn everything. Oh, almost. I've got the beast one now. Nice. Okay, um, those orange knights, for example, not those yellow ones, can literally one shot us. As in, they don't deal damage, they quite simply kill. <laughs> also, that does a fair bit of damage. I hope this guy doesn't attack us. As I said, those orange guys are really scary. Uh, and that's I what I like mean. That. Good idea. And as I said, I'm really bad at playing this. No! Just far enough. Okay, no, no, yeah, no. That's fine. So you select the boy and let's go. The last stretch. So, there are a few more things upcoming on this boss. I hope we get a special yes. surprise. We need, we need the special mode. Yeah, but it's very random. And setting it up is pretty precise and random, I guess. Let's just say that the Dark Lich really likes his theme music. <laughs> yeah. Best boss awesome music. music. Yeah, in my opinion, that's one of the best thematic boss music. Not necessarily best music, but best boss music. So, once again, I will play Meat Shield here. Simply position the sprite the nearest uh, to the Dark Lich, um, so he will target his spells against me. And Stinger will simply try to kill him as quickly as possible. Pick up with the gold. That's right. Come on, yeah, stick yeah. out your head up. Stick out your head. Come on. Please. Oh. Yeah. If it, if it doesn't happen, we don't explain it. You need to heal me, I think. Oh, no, I need to help her. Buffer. Oh, we got another chance at it. Oh, okay. maybe not. He doesn't want to. He needs to kill me next time. Balloon, okay. Oh, it's possible. Oh, crap. Okay. Sorry. Buffer. I got this one. Okay. Yeah. Some attacks can target even uh, other plays, aside from the 
nearest one, and balloon ring is one of those. Yeah. Actually, it doesn't matter. He will one-shot me anyway if I mess it up. So please take your ear head out. So yeah. Yay! Okay. Come on. Yes! yes. <laughs> Wait a little bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna let this it happen. This is bang. the Thanos' head bang. He bangs to his music. Yes. <laughs> So he's basically stuck. Uh -oh. oh, for the most part, uh, he rarely gets out of this. Very, very rarely. <laughs> and he's dead. Apparently yeah. not so rarely. Um, mm -hmm. right. uh, I'm um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. Yeah, I need to take the boy again. All right. I didn't mess. I messed it up, so I couldn't stay. It's very precise to stand <laughs> exactly in the middle of it. Ooh, that was actually really scary. <laughs> so, okay, okay, that's fine. You said the head bang, at least. Yeah. You, as I said, uh, usually he cannot get out of this at all. There we go. Nice. So, he's got a little mix up. You're on the boy now, by the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. He usually cannot get out of this at all, except sometimes when you open and close the menu. Uh, the best thing that can happen is if he immediately switch to the girl, switch the button. All right. I should get that. Okay. Um, the best thing that can happen at Dark Lich is he immediately goes into the headbang mode, and you can slash, 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 and kill him without him casting anything. The second best thing that can happen that is he that he never dives on the ground, and you can simply straight up kill him. Who has to? I have no idea. So, <laughs> yeah, that happens all the time. So, here's the second last glitch. Oh, the wrong side. No, you're on. You're fine. You'll go on to the other side, remember? Oh, yeah, okay, I always forget that. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Here is the second last glitch. What we are doing is con uh, call out the mana sword right now already. Which luckily doesn't cost that much yeah. mana. That was safety. I think it was the other one. So, what we there just we did there, or I just did there, I guess, is I cast the mana sword so first with the girl, waited a little bit, and then cast with the sprite. While the sprite was just finishing his cast, I ran onto the, that teleporting thing. And essentially, what happened is I cancelled out the animation which usually uh, occurs when you first call out the mana sword, which is about 25 seconds of animation which entirely freezes the screen. You can do nothing about it, except this, well. So, and the last glitch, well, the last new glitch, I guess, mm -hmm. is going to happen right now. Also, I love that music, it's over. Mm. Definitely a good way to end the run with this music. Yeah, now it's the Meridian dance. So, last glitch. I don't have mana. You got mana. Oh, it's a Gorgia. Sprite has 10 MP2. You should but take that one, by the way. Yes, I should. Okay. So, what I just did there is I casted. Wait, did, which one did you hand me? <laughs> Oh, sorry, that was inverted. We've got the menu open. Yeah, Andrew G, I'm going to juggle the controls. I unselect. Wait. I unselect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you need to cast too. So, yeah, uh, once again, once, what I did there is I activated the mana sword. And right afterwards, okay. I. Nice, you got the right attack. And right afterwards, I casted. Can you give me Carol Frost Saber. Yeah. Oh, wait. The Frost Saber basically cancelled out the mana. Other oh, person, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. By the way, we usually get the kill. Um, yeah. The Frost Saber cancelled out the mana sword timer because the mana sword is actually a weapon and not an uh, element. So, 
it keeps the weapon and overrides the timer from the mana sword, which usually doesn't last too long unless you level up the mana spirit. So, and what the reason why I use actually the mana sword instead of the spear, even though the spear would technically do the exact same amount of damage, is actually pretty simple because the mana sword has an almost 100% chance to hit, which is extremely handy. You need to heal. So why are you going in and out of the menu there? I'm doing that to you buffer the charge heal. attack. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, oh, we crap. didn't explain that, I guess. That's, what's, that's the last one. Okay. So yeah, I buff for as soon as I can. Mm. I'm gonna reset this. Yeah, it's good. Oh yeah, we didn't explain how we store the charge. Basically what happens is we open the menu. Right here, we open the menu at the specific point close the menu, unleash the charge attack, and basically hold the charge attack at the specific points. It's relatively hard to explain right now, but yeah. if you would like to know how specific that those things work, there should be somewhere an FAQ I wrote. I forgot about that. Um, in the FAQ are most of the basic things explained already. Also, I'm going to take uh, candy right here, because okay. why not? Time? time is after it's the last hit, so I'll let you know. It's soon. Oops, why did I do that? I don't know. Just keep attacking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, get ready. Yep. Time. Time. Two thirteen exactly. Mm. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, guys. But wait, there's more. Yeah. Even though we had all those safety saves in it, it still beats the current uh, two-player co-op run. Yeah, the uh, previous record for a co-op run was 216.24. Yeah. By you guys? No, uh, no. Kovacis and Shane. But they didn't run this in quite a while. Yeah. So it's that a pretty old run. Ago. But it was a pretty good run at the time. But I'm pretty happy we beat that today. So I think the incentive for the Glitch Fest was met, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Okay, so... I'll never forget Batman either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor Batman. So I will let this cutscene play a little bit and... basically pull up my notes so I don't forget anything. So it shouldn't take too, too long, I think. We will see about that. Mm -hmm. So basically, as we said earlier, you can save for pretty much anywhere. This includes these ending cutscenes. And what happens, well, I guess I simply show it right now. Well, not right now, as in when the cutscene comes up. Yeah, it'll be the first cutscene that comes up after this. So right here, mm -hmm. You can see, they meet those other people right here. Now I save up into it. Load the frost forest side. And we are in this cutscene. <laughs> with no music. Why don't you fix that? Is it right though? Yes. It's pretty sure it's right though. Okay, we have some music. <laughs> <laughs> and they are still standing here. We. They don't talk at all. <laughs> they don't talk at all. Also, I wonder what's in that shop. Kind of troublesome. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So yeah, also I think it's a bit cold in here, so I suggest we move on. <laughs> to the desert. <laughs> <laughs> 
So that was one part. The next one is a bit more extensive. And I prepared this save file here. This save file is pretty special. In a few ways, take one controller. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for one, we have three swords. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not normally intended, by the way. Just in case you didn't know that. I didn't know that. So, yeah. As if, you, if I open the menu, you can see no one has equipped anything, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, the yeah. way that is done is an extension of the equipment trashing glitch, where you saw us duplicating items through it, but you can also do other things like unequip your weapons. Yep. Uh, oh, that's new. Oh, right. Yeah. This cutscene is pretty special, uh -huh. uh, but usually you are supposed to have only one character in it. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty weird, I guess. Also, the sprite is AI controlled and he considers this to be an enemy, but since this is a no combat scene, nothing happens with him. Also, click on. Let's push the girl a bit over here. <laughs> this is the uh, NPC girl. You look delicious. So yeah, by the way, the pot has no hitbox, so I can't push it. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty interesting. Click on. Simply uh, go on through the casting. Okay. Basically until I say stop. So yeah, the girl tries to free the girl, I guess? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I feel like that's not appropriate. So I push her into the middle of the goblin. <laughs> again, it's pretty strange, I guess. But our girl will somehow manage magically come out again anyways. And <laughs> 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 that's that. So, for now, Again, I can save form into any cutscene. Um, this is also pretty special to save form into this one. Because you're not supposed to be here. Those things are weird. Also here, those things are <laughs> Yeah, there's not exactly a barrier. Yeah. Also, what's in this house? Music. <laughs> and what's in this house? Nice. Water house. <laughs> Yeah, that's a big house. <laughs> that's a really big house. But now we know where the goblins sneak in in the night. Mm -hmm. Nothing's happening. Okay. No, nothing's happening. What about from this side? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next one on the list is the Inverted Scroll. Uh, that's yours. Yeah, unselect the first. Yeah, okay. You have the oh, first right. controller. Unselect that one. There we go. Yeah. Uh, you can have it. So this one will take a little bit longer to set up, unfortunately, but it's worth it. Let, trust me. So who has played Secret of Mana before? Okay, pretty much everyone. <laughs> so you know how to play it, right? Hmm, this intro looks different. Yeah, for some reason. This run has made me question a great many things about my life choices this far. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't these screens usually scroll around? Yeah, they should actually. Yeah. <laughs> huh. That's weird. Yeah. I think you did something wrong. <laughs> I guess. How did this one happen? Did it involve yeah. where you came from for that? No, it was. Uh, Soft resetting while having the first controller on the girl, and it results in a couple interesting things. <laughs> yes, indeed. Why don't you hand off the controller to someone who can okay. actually play that Here. correctly? Here, okay. <laughs> so, simply match through the cutscene. That's no as normal. But if you pay close attention, the boy doesn't actually fall all the way for some reason. He is. I think he's a ghost. He's already dead. 
Wait a minute, the ghost on the falls is me. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now simply try to pick up the sword. If you can do that. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> what? Yeah, about that. Watch the sword doing sword. Yeah, let's see a sword. There it is. There it is. Oh, there it's gone. Thanks, thanks. Can I get it again? Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Software setting in City of Mana has a great many side effects, and <laughs> that's one of them. Here's all the screen hey, scoring that was supposed to happen during the intro. That's where it went. <laughs> that's exactly how it is. Back to the sword. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the last portion. I need to get some safe file. It doesn't matter which one. So, we are here, where we shouldn't be actually. Can we? <laughs> but that's not what we are going for. So, the magic rope has also its interesting quirks. Um, for example, the Pandora Castle has a pretty special place. It is pretty special, actually. So, actually, load is wrong safe. Oh, hang on. It doesn't matter. I can load it afterwards. So, for example, this room is special, very special. If you go inside, you can't go outside again. Nice. Okay. Um, but if you go inside, and for some reason, choose to use the magic rope right here, and go outside. You spawn in the room, again. <laughs> which is, I guess, a little bit normal since you entered here. But then I try to go outside again, and it looks a little bit different. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess that works. So we cannot get out of here anymore. <laughs> so. so the only reason is uh, the only thing left is to reset and uh, load a safe file. <laughs> Let, uh, yeah, we are in the wall, right around here, and we are basically stuck right now. <laughs> Nothing we can do about it, except there is a way out of it, I guess. And if you know, hang on, we didn't save it. I, I definitely saved it. Okay, that's weird. Okay, what is supposed to happen here? <laughs> we, we are supposed to have a blood item and simply use it. But that somehow disappeared, I guess. It was definitely on a cut of wishes. You saw it. Yeah, I know. So I guess that's it. Unfortunately, I couldn't uh, crash the game. Oh, actually, <laughs> I can't crash the game. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. Well, that was easy. <laughs> So that was a bit less. So yeah, well, thank you for watching, and mm -hmm. thank you to the Spectre of Mana guys, to especially also to Mech Character for those amazing prizes. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy about those. I want that flamey pearl. That <laughs> would be amazing. Also. I would like to mention the next run, Star Fox, Star Fox 64. I think currently ahead is the high score run. And I watched a little bit of it, and it's amazing. You really want to watch that. So that's it from me. Thank you. <coughs> All right, guys, that was Secret of Mana by Stinger PA and uh, Yagama. Coming up next will be Star Fox 64. Real quick, I'm going to read this donation. Uh, it says, Stinger PA, being involved in early cancer detection and prevention, we are proud of your efforts to help with Prevent Cancer Foundation. Good luck. <laughs>